What is up guys, Kosho here at the Lion's Den with the main star of the day, Mr. Zeke, the most amazing three-legged dog you've ever seen. He's going to be following me around. I'm just going to do an updated gym tour. We've had a lot more equipment get put in this gym. Uh, if you're a gym owner or someone looking for a gym or maybe you want to build your own gym, this is going to be an awesome video for you. So stick around. It's going to be a little bit longer, but I guarantee you're going to learn a lot of cool things, what to purchase, what not to purchase, and just my thoughts on gym equipment. But this is the Lion's Den located in Colmar, PA. So if you're in the area, stop in, check it out. Number one thing most people say is it's a lot bigger uh, in person than it looks on video, but we have our walk-in area with a shelf for everybody to put their bags. Uh, we have bins for their bags and belts, whatever. Uh, we have our pro team. We have a water fountain by WaterLogic. Great investment, cheap, cold water all the time. And we used to actually have these big five gallon dr uh, drums of water that we had to replace and it being very expensive. So purchase one of these for your gym if you have a lot of people drinking water, fridge, microwave, supplements, etc. This is one of the newest additions to the gym. We built this huge, uh, I guess it'd be like a bar or kind of like a big desk area for uh, greeting people. And eventually I'm gonna have all my shirts and products behind here. Uh, but it's just kind of a nice thing that you see right when you walk into the gym, followed up by the lounge area. We like to make everybody super comfortable here, make them feel at home. So we have couches, chairs, found these couches either from someone who um, had given them to us or uh, just from Habitat for Humanity, just a really cheap, way to get some stuff. Now, it's very cool if you're a gym owner to have your own office. I really recommend it if you can. So this is my office. You guys probably have seen this from the videos that I put on YouTube, but I kind of have my books, my desk, my chair, my whiteboard, etc. So that's kind of just a general layout. And if you can have an office, highly recommend it. So follow me, we'll start going through the gym. Right here, we kind of have our little cardio section. It's been growing little by little. So we always have a rower, we have an airdyne, followed up by a treadmill, and then one of my newest additions, just an elliptical, so it gives people some options. And then over here we have bathrooms. So we have two bathrooms, one for the ladies, voila, very clean, beautiful. And then one for the guys, clean as well. If you're a gym owner, number one thing that's gonna be huge is cleanliness. Keep your bathrooms clean, smelling clean. It's worth a little bit extra investment in your time. People really appreciate that stuff. No one likes going to the bathroom in a crappy, smelly, dirty bathroom. So don't be that gym owner or go to a gym that's like that. So this is our open gym side. So primarily we have strongman competitors, power lifters, just people who wanna get involved with strength and conditioning. Uh, the cool thing about my gym is it's always open for open gym and we also do classes as well. So you get the best of both worlds. And if you've been going to a CrossFit gym or maybe a class-based gym, it sometimes is tough if they offer open gym or they don't. So like I said, we wanna offer both. So Olympic lifting platform and it can also be used for deadlifts. We have competition plates, little change plates. So it's just a nice platform for people who wanna do only lifts or if they need an extra platform to work on, we have that followed up by two other deadlift platforms. One has uh, a spot for bands, the other one's just a regular one, but we got plates. I mean, we probably have thousands of, of pounds of plates in here, all different types of barbells, regular barbells, powerlifting barbells, deadlift bars, specialty bars, etc. So keep walking through, you can kind of cruise around. We have a uh, power rack. So this is a, a big heavy duty power rack, which a lot of the heavy lifts get done in here, followed up by uh, lap pull down. I think lap pull down is a crucial investment if you can find one. This is a plate loadable one. Everybody always asks me what brand it is. I have no idea. I got it for 120 bucks. It was a steal. And it's been just one of the most used pieces of equipment. Fabulous. Uh, more power racks. You can kind of see if you want to just kind of peruse around. You can show them the power racks that we have. Cool. And then this is one of our newest pieces of equipment, a hack squat. This thing is absolutely amazing. So if you can get something like a hack squat or a leg press or a belt squat, really recommend it for the variations you can use. And for people that are trying to obviously train for powerlifting, strongman, etc., this is just a great investment. Since we've gotten it, a lot of people have been using it. So highly recommend if you can get something like that. Uh, but as you can see, you know, we got plates, we have bands. More specialty bars, multi-grip bars, trap bars, bumper plates, you name it. And then we'll come over to this side real quick. Another good piece of equipment is this uh, hamstring curl machine. So I'm not a big fan of having a lot of machines, but more so machines that have a good purpose. And 
Uh, this is just something that we use a lot in here for leg training days. And if we're just trying to isolate using the hamstrings, switch up from doing barbell movements or dumbbell, this has been an awesome piece to invest in. Over on this side, basically we have our dumbbells. We have dumbbells that go up to a hundred pounds. Um, so I probably won't get anything over a hundred until someone can rep out 15 to 20 reps with the hundos. No one's been able to do that quite yet besides myself, I think. But once we have more members, eventually we'll get there. I'm gonna have to start buying some heavier dumbbells. So if you wanna rep out 15 to 20 reps, get your button here, pull the hundreds out, and I will buy bigger dumbbells if you end up training here. Uh, but some basic pieces of equipment for powerlifting, overload work. We got hip circles, we got slingshots, we got a dip belt, you name it, more barbells over here. A couple of benches, incline benches, flat benches, and we actually used to have two GHDs. There used to be two side by side, uh, but to be honest with you, they weren't getting used that much. So I ended up selling one and I had just bought a reverse hyper. So unfortunately the reverse hyper didn't make it for the video, but there will be a reverse hyper in here. Uh, we've been getting requested a lot. Sometimes when people walk right in, one of the first things asked if we have is a reverse hyper. So just by demand, I bought one and it's gonna go hand in hand with uh, a GHD. So cable machine, I feel like you gotta have some sort of cross training cable machine. Uh, we do lots of push downs, lots of chest flies. Some people do leg work on here, you know, et cetera. There's so many exercises you can do uh, with a cable machine, but I think, you know, it's just a nice staple to have. Uh, in your gym to allow you a little bit more training options. So that's pretty much the layout of this side of the gym. Um, layout wise, we kind of like how we have you know, stuff on the side, in the middle, and the other side. It gives two nice, easy walkways. No one feels super congested, and it just has a nice flow. And as a gym owner and an athlete, uh, maybe athletes don't think about it as much, but as a gym owner, definitely have to consider flow when you have a good amount of people in here. What's going to be the most bang for your buck when it comes to maximizing the space that you have. So come on over to this side. So this side is the other 2,500 square feet of the 5,000 that we have. And this is primarily where we have all of our classes as well as do a lot of our strongman training uh, and conditioning. So uh, real quick, if you come over here, we have just some conditioning implements. We got battle ropes, we got throw bags, we have slam balls. And this is our grip wall. So we have tons of different grip implements from Grip Genie, uh, Fat Grips, you know, et cetera. You can see all that kind of stuff. We use that a lot. We got our ab mats right here because we use those a ton for class. Big fan because it's pretty much 100 degrees in here right now. So having a big fan is, is very crucial. Uh, then we have rowers. We have seven total rowers uh, for the gym, which is just a pretty good number for we have around 60 some members. So with our classes anywhere from 10 to 12 people, having uh, seven rowers is nice to use. Uh, bumper plates, then we have a couple more racks on this side, just some squat racks. We got our kettlebells, we got our farmer handles, we have more plates for people to use, uh, tons of different collars. We have some basic collars from Amazon, which are really cheap. Then we have some heavy duty collars from Rogue, which are really worth the investment because especially if you're doing like heavy carries, uh, or you're doing log clean and press or axle bar clean and press, you don't have to worry about the weight falling off with any of those implements. So definitely worth the investment to get some stuff like that. We have sleds uh, that require straps. So here are our straps for the sleds that we use, some agility ladders, some things for athletes because we do train some athletes here as well. Uh, but then this is kind of our big rogue monster light uh, rig, I guess I would call it. Yeah, rig. And it has uh, three available stations for squat, bench, whatever you want to do from the rack. And then tons of different pull-up bars, different heights. Uh, just if you guys are doing classes or you're in a CrossFit, this is just a great rig to use. Uh, we put some rings automatically on there because people like to do some ring work, but that's pretty much the gist with that. And then we have our sleds. We have about five sleds, but we use three of them in here. We're very fortunate to have a space to do sleds back and forth. So it's uh, about 100 feet uh, when you go down and back. So it's just an easy way to measure. So keep on coming. A couple of boxes. So we got boxes for box drums uh, or any explosive work that we're doing. And then this is gonna be more of the strongman stuff as we get further down here. So Husa fell stones, we have all different makes and sizes of Husa fell stones, which is nice because in strongman, you will have to deal with different makes and models of all strongman equipment. So we try to have a good variety of different brands for people to use that could be a little bit more specific to their competition that they have. Circus dumbbells, anywhere from eight inches and light all the way up to 12 inches and very big. 
We got some actually some straw man hammers back here, which are pretty dope. These are one of the coolest things that we got. So we got one of these Thor hammers. Uh, this will actually be an event in our upcoming straw man competition. More bumper plates down here for people that are going to use the logs or axle bars, just convenient. So we got different logs, different axle bars, and then we have sandbags over here that go all the way up to 300 pounds. So um, tons of different ones, Cerberus, Rogue, both are great companies uh, that we use. We have a couple brute force sandbags. And then we got kegs. Kegs go all the way up to uh, 300 pounds. And we have all different weights that people can use for keg carries, keg loads, anything straw man related. And then uh, this here takes up a lot of space. It's a little bit banged up. We're actually probably going to uh, probably uh, restore it a little bit more, but this is just a podium for loading things too. So you can load your stones to here, you could load kegs to here, atlas stones, uh, whatever. So it's just a nice implement to load stuff up onto. We got tires that we use uh, for either conditioning stuff or as crash pads for big implements that we're using, such as a log or axle bar. We had these jerk blocks that I originally bought for doing jerks off of. Um, but they were just kind of a strange height and they weren't being used as much. So I just turned them into extra loading blocks for people to use sandbags or stones up to. And then here we have our Atlas stones, which go up to 435. We actually have a world strongest man stone in the back. That's the 435 absolute tank of a stone, uh, but they go anywhere from 30 pounds up to 435. A couple tires here, which I just got for free. So if you guys are looking to find out where you get some tires, you can just go to a local tire supply store or the, you know, obviously tires that are supplied for big tractors. And they basically have like a tire graveyard somewhere probably, and they'll let you come and pick them up for free basically because it costs them money to get rid of them. So if you just offer, hey, I wanna come get some tires, they'll pretty much let you just take them. So that's how I get my tires. We have a frame, which is also uh, farmer handles, very cool from Beast Metals. And then we have two more uh, yokes that are from Rogue. And we have a car deadlift platform a bunch of buckets filled with stones for carries, as well as uh, chlorine jugs filled with rocks and sand for farmer walks, uh, more kegs, some wall balls, and uh, some sledgehammers. So that's pretty much the gist of what we have in this gym. I can really get everything done. We have people here, like I said, who train strongman, powerlifting, we do some bodybuilding, hypertrophy work, as well as just the general, you know, mom and pop who wanna just get more in shape, more athletic, um, and as well as uh, strong. So. That's kind of what we have in here. And I would say the things in the future that we're looking for, we wanna get a belt squat for sure. I'm looking to get a combo rack for powerlifters and then down the line, probably some calibrated plates. But for the most part, we really can get it done with everything that you guys saw in this video. Not everything is super necessary, but I think it's a really good base if you just have a couple of the things that I mentioned in this video, uh, whether it's for your gym or if it's looking at the gym for the layout, how we lay it out. It's nice that we have two sides and we designate each side for something specifically. The flow is super great in here, uh, but that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions on any of the equipment that I mentioned or just questions in general about building your own gym, garage gym, et cetera, put them down below in the comment section. Once this video is uploaded, I stay on for about an hour and just kind of help you guys out answering all your questions and giving you any feedback that I have. Um, but it is nice when it comes to purchasing, you guys wanna look around different websites. You know, there's a lot of people selling stuff right now. Uh, probably now isn't the best time because of price gouging, but in the past, always check to see what's being used on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, um, bartering, et cetera. There's ways to get a lot of equipment and good quality equipment, as well as making your own equipment. You know, a lot of the stuff I made over time too. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Did I forget anything, Kushania? Nope, she said no. So I think we're good. So make sure you stay in Lean Me Strike Machine. Subscribe to the channel. Hopefully this video helps give you guys an idea of how I lay my gym out and how you can lay your gym out. Peace.